Our correspondent in North Asia, Mark Willisey, is following these developments from Japan. Mark, good to speak with you. What are you hearing about the latest in regard to this tremor and whether it does indeed point to some sort of nuclear test? Yes, Scott, we, we believe that it's pretty well certain that it was a nuclear test. We've had Japan, South Korea convene emergency security meetings on this issue. North Korea has no history, unlike Japan, of big seismic activity. So when you uh, do get an earthquake uh, of this magnitude in an area where there's an underground nuclear test scheduled to take place, uh, it's not easy, and not hard rather, to put two and two together. So we are moving ahead with the assumption that this was a nuclear test. And from the reaction of the South Koreans and the Japanese, it would appear that that is the case. Also, we've heard reports come out of South, South Korea that North Korea had earlier warned both Beijing and Washington that it would go ahead with a nuclear test, and these reports say that they were warned it would be today. So we all fit that this is a nuclear test, the third nuclear test by Pyongyang. In terms of the leadership of uh, Seoul and Tokyo, what sort of reaction is there going to be, do you envisage? Well, I imagine there'll be the usual reaction, Scott. I don't really know what what else they can do. There'll be condemnation of this. We understand that the UN Security Council will meet about this Tuesday morning New York time. Of course, South Korea and Japan will be at the forefront of that meeting in terms of putting forward their views, their condemnation about this. Um, but really, we don't know what will happen. North Korea, every time it conducts a missile test or a nuclear test, the sanctions get squeezed even tighter. The only real reaction that really counts at the moment, I think, is from China. And that will be the, the big question. What will China do? It did not want this test. It warned North Korea, its ally, not to go ahead. North Korea, of course, utilises a lot of uh, aid from China, both food and fuel. So the heat will now be on Beijing to see whether it cuts that aid in response and in punishment for North Korea moving ahead with this test. Mark, since the last test, which was back in 2009, and then obviously the international condemnation that followed, there's been a change of leadership in Pyongyang. What dynamic might that well bring to whatever negotiations come to play in regard to Pyongyang and the rest of the world here? Well, I think with Kim Jong-un, the new young ruler, he's proving that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He's proving just as unpredictable, just as, I suppose, malevolent in the eyes of some people in this region as his father did. Now, there were hopes when he took over in late 2011, early 2012, that we would see some reform. After all, this young man was educated in Switzerland. He apparently loves American basketball. He was open to the culture of the West while he was in Europe. But we've seen absolutely no sign of that. Um, in fact, we seem to have got just Kim Jong-il Mark II. So I think from the West perspective, um, there really will only be one way of dealing with this, and that is possibly more sanctions, although it's going to be hard to tighten them even further, considering the noose is about as tight as it can be. And Mark, another change in leadership since, of course, or at least change in tone, has occurred in both South Korea and Japan. The electorate made it clear to their respective governments that they want wanted a tougher stance uh, by virtue of uh, shifting to, to Conservatives more. Are those Conservative leaders in Seoul and Tokyo likely to respond with something other than mere words, mere condemnation towards Pyongyang? Look, I think all we will see, Scott, is that condemnation. More words. We'll see the South Korean military, which I believe has already gone on high alert. It goes on high alert quite a bit, as you'd imagine, given the behaviour of North Korea. I think the biggest threat to South Korea possibly doesn't come immediately from North Korea's nuclear program. It comes from a possible skirmish near the naval border or along the land border. That's where a war could possibly start at the moment. The big question, though, is with this nuclear test, what has North Korea achieved for its own aims? And, and that's the big question in the coming days that will have to be answered. The big question is, did it use highly enriched uranium? Because because the first two tests use plutonium. If they've used uranium, it means that they've opened up another source for possible nuclear weapons. Mark Willisey in Japan, our North Asia correspondent. Thanks very much.